So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made my M4 Pro Mac Mini a little bit more pro, giving me more ports, an SD card slot, all in one compact package, and mainly extra storage abilities. So we'll talk about that a little bit in the video, but if it's your first time here, my name's Almir, aka Mr. H Tech. Now, if I do earn your subscription, whether it be anywhere in the video, remember, hit that subscribe button below. We're so close to getting 20,000 subscribers. Like the video if you do end up liking it, share it with your friends and family if you think they might enjoy the content I make. And let's go check out how to make your M4 Mac Mini that little bit more pro. So before we actually get into the video, I have to make a quick statement, it's only fair. You might have seen, you might have not. I did post a video yesterday about the MacForge case for the M4 Mac Mini, and I said that it's such a great case, I really like using it, but there was one big issue, and that was that the Wi-Fi was dropping from around 450 megabits per second down to around 80 or just under 100, which for me was unreasonable. And I did kind of put the blame on the MacForge case, and something didn't, something didn't sound right, or I didn't think that that could be such an issue. So I spent the whole day yesterday testing it out, different cables, different scenarios, different equipment plugged in, and I think I found the actual problem and it wasn't, fortunately, it wasn't the case by zero. So I had to make that announcement. I've got results on the screen now of different scenarios that I actually put the M4 Mac Mini in inside the MacForge case. And you can see that there is a big drop when I have the NVMe in the top connected to the M4 Mac Mini inside the MacForge case with these small cables. Now, this is the cable I used in the testing, which is the Orico one. It's a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which came with the Minimate. Now, small cable, and ideally you wanna use a small cable because if the NVMe drive is in the top and you wanna be plugging it in such a short distance, you don't really want a long cable because then you have to go around hiding it and managing that. So I tried using this one. It does do a little bit of a drop in the Wi-Fi, However, the Hagabis one, when I connect it, it causes such an interference, it seems to cut out the Wi-Fi completely and it just won't work for some reason. So be very careful if you're plugging in the NVMe drive in the top of the MacForge Mac Mini case and you're using a very short cable, be very careful as it may affect your Wi-Fi speeds. Otherwise, it seems to be if you've just got a longer cable or even if you're not putting an NVMe drive in the top, the MacForge case itself doesn't cause any Wi-Fi issues. So I just had to put a wrong right, otherwise I didn't feel comfortable saying such bad things about the Zero case if they're not true. So, yeah. So this is the MacForge Gen 2 version by the company Zero, with a little bit of modifications, but we'll go through that in the video. Just one second. And first, Putting the actual M4 Mac Mini Pro or M4 Pro Mac Mini into the case, it's very simple. The top is held in with magnets, so it just pops off like that. You've got a magnet there and a magnet there. And then the inside, we could just go like this and take this section out. And this is the actual housing that the M4 Mac Mini is going to sit inside. So once you take it off, the two panels at the back, which have no openings, align on each other, so you know the correct way to turn it around. And regards to this, you've got the power button section there. So you just wanna make sure that aligns to the power button on the M4 Mac Mini. So then we find the section with no cutout, matches the section with no cutout on the other end, clamp them on top of each other. And it might be a little bit of a tight fit, but it's plastic, so don't worry too much. And there we go. Now the shell is in there. And then when we turn it around, we want to make sure that the power button section on this whole section is aligned with the power button on the actual aluminum case. So put it in like that. And let it go down. And there we go. And now the top section, we put this in, put the magnet in, and the Mac Mini is in there. Looks pretty cool. You've got your openings for your ports, opening for the ventilation on the side for the air ventilation, and your ports on the front with the aux cable port open. Now this is just a sticker I found which is on there. It actually has no label on the actual um, case on itself. And then on the bottom I've put this Satoshi hub. Now this is actually a hub meant for the 
iMac so it's meant to clamp onto the monitor and then you'll connect it to I'm guessing the back of the iMac into the USB-C port. I figured this was a very good little addition. I removed the clamp section and then I put it underneath. It was just the right distance between the legs where it would fit but I did have to put this little silicon on the front and back just to make sure the legs have a little bit more clearance as if without the silicon it touches too much and it doesn't let this actual hub fit in. So a little bit of thicker silicon there raises the legs up, doesn't make them wobble and then this can slide in and then putting a strong piece of double-sided tape on the underside of this is now attached to the bottom of the actual case and that in essence is how you set that up and then another thing I did the top section you might see there's a lot of space in there and that's for a specific reason because you can actually put yourself an external drive in here which is exactly what I've done now although it has ventilation on the side here using something like a Thunderbolt 5 drive by Acasis with the fan and the ventilation on the sides in here I do have a Orico 07000 two terabyte drive because they are quite fast and they're good value for money. Now the only issue is I wouldn't recommend putting a drive in the top here that requires a fan and with these Thunderbolt 5 ones they do get a little bit hot so they do have a fan there to cool it down. Now although you have ventilation on the sides when you pop this on top you really will not you won't be getting any clearance for the top section of the fan and it won't fit as is so you need to take the bottom section off that houses the actual NVMe to fit in there perfectly fine. So I wouldn't recommend that. What you can do and what I've done, get a Thunderbolt 4 one that has no fan inside. It's a lot smaller because it doesn't have a fan. It doesn't need any cooling in terms of ventilation on the sides. It just cools itself from the heatsink etc. But the ventilation on the actual case will help with that. And this slides in perfectly fine and gives you a lot of space there. And then you can just get yourself like a small Thunderbolt 4 type cable, slides in here and plugs into the hub. And then we close the top and there we go. In this Acasis Thunderbolt 4 NVMe enclosure, I've got a E7400 Orico drive, which has four terabytes of storage and basically everything on my M4 Pro Mac Mini, because it has 512 gigabyte internal, everything else that I don't need to be on the actual operating system, so all of my YouTube stuff, all the videos, all the high storage type of files, goes on this four terabyte drive, including my final cut editing is all done from this. So a lot of the free storage stays free on my actual internal drive, and then this is basically uses all of the storage on this with four terabytes which when you include the price of the SSD and the actual NVMe enclosure, you're saving a ton of money instead of upgrading the internal of the machine there. So like I said, this goes in here, you plug it in, close the top, and with that short cable, you can literally just bend it like that, and you're plugged in. The bottom cable for the Satoshi can also be plugged in. And now we've got a nice hub with more sections. For example, one that I needed was the SD card slot. So now I've got that. Couple USB-A ports, which I probably won't use. A USB-C port there, micro SD card. I've got extra USB-C ports on the front. And then I've got the HDMI, Ethernet, and power cord in the back with one extra USB-C cable, which I'm not sure what I'll use that for, but it's good to have one extra on there. So yeah, a M4 Pro, Mac Mini Pro, all in one for a little bit of money. And I think it looks really nice. Obviously you can do a little bit more cable management with these, attach it to the side here so it doesn't come out as much if that's something you wanna do. And then of course you have that power button on the side for all of you who actually turn off their M4 Mac Mini regularly. Easy access, you just press the button and the machine is on. So there you have it. That's how I made my M4 Pro Mac Mini Pro, as I say. Now, I hope you did enjoy the video. Let me know down in the comments box below what you enjoyed, if you're thinking of doing this for yourself, if you've got any other tips for anyone else down there, or for even me to see. And again, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments box below so I get the chance to answer them. Because if you don't ask, you don't get. 
Now, I want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support. All links for all the products are going to be in the description box down below. So if you did like the video, remember to like it. If I earned your subscription, subscribe, share it with friends and family, and I will catch you on the next one.